Astronomers, for the first time, have detected the faint hum of gravitational waves echoing throughout the universe. Teams of scientists across the world have been monitoring space to observe the phenomenon, which Albert Einstein predicted more than a century ago. They don't exactly know what's causing the hum, but it may be coming from supermassive black holes spiralling together before merging. Let's get more on this. We can speak to Michael Lamb, uh, a research scientist at the SETI Institute. He was part of the team that conducted the nanograph study. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Thank you for joining the program. So if I understand this correctly, scientists had suspected that these gravitational waves existed, but now they have proof of this. Uh, we actually have had proof of them before. Uh, the LIGO and Virgo collaborations in 2016 they ended up detecting gravitational waves, but in a different part of the spectrum. So what I mean by that is if you look with your eyes, uh, you see light of a certain wavelength range. So you can see red to blue, but there's other light that exists out there. There's infrared, which is longer wavelength than red. There's ultraviolet, which is a uh, shorter wavelength than blue. There's X-rays, there's radio waves. And so all of these different kinds of waves are electromagnetic waves. In uh, 2016, LIGO and Virgo announced the discovery of gravitational waves for the first time, which is a completely different way of observing the universe. They observe very high frequency gravitational waves, that is, waves with very, very, very short uh, wavelengths. And so what we have done for the first time is open up a second window on the gravitational wave universe. Okay. So we're looking at very, very, very long period waves. Right. And, and you think that these waves are caused by massive black holes spiraling together. What, what Will that tell us more about black holes themselves? It will tell us, it can tell us a little bit about black holes. Um, one of the more important things I think is that it will tell us a lot about the environments around these massive black holes. We know that these massive black holes exist at the center of every galaxy. Our galaxy has a, a massive black hole in the center. And we know that galaxies merge together uh, when we look out in, in space. And so as the two galaxies merge, we expect that the black hole should merge. Um, and we now have, or we think we have some evidence for this. Um, that is one of the possible mechanisms of the gravitational waves. So how, how do you take this forward? How, how, does this, how, do you, how do you go forward with this re, uh, research? Yeah, great question. Um, we have... Every time astronomers have opened a new window into studying the universe, we have found really new and exciting things. For us, uh, as we observe more of these objects called pulsars, which make up our detector, as we observe them for longer, we're able to gain better sensitivity. And that will help us answer a lot of fundamental questions about the universe, how galaxies have merged and evolved over the entire course of the universe, um, possibly finding interesting signals out there from the very, very, very beginning of the universe around the Big Bang, lots of other possible things. And so this is only really the beginning, and we really think that we're uh, opening up this window to new and exciting discoveries. Uh, it's interesting you say this is the beginning because uh, Albert Einstein in 1916 was the first to kind of think about gravitational waves or the idea of gravitational waves. As a scientist, a uh, researcher, do you find it incredible that so far back he was able to predict uh, their existence? I do. I think Albert Einstein is incredible in many ways. Uh, he has come up with an, uh, an entire framework of how we understand gravity in the universe. And so far, nothing has been able to break that understanding uh, of, of gravity. Uh, I think what's even more incredible is that it's taken 100 years for us to reach the point where we were first able to detect very high-frequency gravitational waves with LIGO and Virgo, and then a few years later, uh, we have evidence for low-frequency gravitational waves um, from collaborations such as my own and other international partners around the world. Uh, it just goes to show that even though these were predicted by Einstein, uh, it's been an incredibly hard effort in order to do so, and it's taken the work of lots of people over many decades. Well, thank you for your amazing work. Michael Lamb, research scientist at the SETI Institute. Thank you. Thank you.